Good afternoon and welcome to the Car Design News webinar for today. For those of you all around the world, we welcome you to this great showcase where we've got an amazing panel uh, beaming in live from the USA and in France from Dassault Systems. We're going to discover the new innovation of the app, the ISIM Design Experience, the IDX, built with CAS and Class A modelers in mind. But before we get to our presenters, let's kind of just go through some housekeeping. Now it's very important that you watch the webinar throughout because we've got this great opportunity for some live Q and A with the, with the guys. Um, if you do have any technical issues, what we'd suggest is you switch off, re-hit the link and log back in. If you do miss anything, this sessions will be recorded and you'll get it in your uh, thank you email or if you didn't attend, in your, you know, here, don't miss the recording. On, on the second note, if you do have any key questions, put them in the chat box um, and I will deal with them at the end. I already have a raft of questions um, for the guys, which some tough ones as well. So do not hesitate to write any tough questions. Um, but it's my pleasure to welcome our presenters for the day who are gonna run through the app. Um, and I'm gonna be joined here today by Bill Silimanos, um, and Fabio Ballari, uh, both from Katia, um, Dasso, um, Dasso Systems. So can I bring Bill and um, Fabio up on the screen, please? Hello, Bill. Hey, guys. How are you? Good. Good. Hello, folks. Excellent. Now, I just want to make sure, because our global audience don't know where you guys are based. Fabio, where are you based at the moment? Where are you? Paris, Paris in France. France. Mm -hmm. Paris, France, where he's got the horrible weather we've got. But I think, Bill, where are you actually based uh, at the moment? Yeah, we have great weather here. North America, I'm in Detroit, Michigan. Okay, so it's probably snowing. Um, <laughs> Always. <where are> we? <laughs> so um, I just wanted to say something, you know, to our audience that, you know, when you hear the words app, I kind of like it brings through many ideas of what an app can be. But for me personally, and this is something I wanted to share with the guys, is when I think of an app is the ease of use, um, how I can personalize it to myself and it can be used remotely. I mean, it, it's really a time issue for me. An app is such a, a dynamic way of saving so much time and having something that is tailored to me. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to, to allow you guys to showcase uh, the new app um, to the team. So I'm going to hand over now. Uh, the presentation role to um, uh, Fabio and Bill. And what I'll do is I'll come on at the end for some live Q&A. So all over to you guys. Thanks, Abel. Thanks, Abel. So as Abel said, welcome to this webinar, ISM Design Experience, uh, the new generation of surface modeling software. Uh, today with me, there is uh, Bill, Bill Silamianos, uh, which is our senior industry process consultant based in North America. And myself, Fabio Ballari, a design technical specialist from R&D Dassault. So, let's start by defining what's the scope and the coverage of Katia Design. You will see we have three main pillars, Katia Creative Design for creative teams, surface refinement, providing tools for high quality surfaces modeling, and modelers, and reverse engineers, of course, and product experience, so delivering visualization and immersive experience. But today we're going to focus on surface refinement. So what about styling and class A technical surfaces? What you can see here is the uh, product that are actually on the market from uh, the SOS system. On the left side, you you have the well-known ISEM serve, which uh, over the years has become standard in uh, surface class I modeling. On the right, we have the integrated version of ISEM serve inside Katia, brings to the user to the user associativity, uh, together with um, integrated workflow and of course parametric modeling. But today we're going to focus to the new software uh, out on the market which is ISIM design experience, bringing new user experience and new technology. We will see in details. So um, just to define this new application, ISIM design experience is the next generation for CAS and 
class A. So you can see on the left, more CAS concept modeling, and on the right, the final result of the modeling, which is the, the class A. All this with the new level of productivity, innovation, and collaboration we will see during this webinar. Since it's the beginning of the project, we started by defining the KPIs uh, based on our existing product. And the target was really to have a, a twice double the efficiency of our uh, software. So this really aims our IT design experience. So we based on measurement like mouse mice and workflow, and we have tried to optimize all of this in one single app. So let's see it in action. So you can see here, thanks to the integration and the 3D experience platform, we directly have access to the mechanical and, and uh, electrical engineer um, technical uh, constraints, which is actually a very good benefit for designer because since the beginning, we can take care about those technical constraints without any data export, import and export. We're just able to load it. You can see how the ICM design experience brings a uh, really new user uh, experience. Uh, you see on the right, we have a palette, we have a new VNAV, uh, you have just seen some mouse menu. So we have tried to redefine the full user interface, the full user interface. Also selection has been improved. We also have introduced new technology like the Omni technology. We will see details later on, the soft power metric. All this to bring new experience to those modeler that has to be productive. Thanks to the associativity that is native in Katia, now we are able to modify and create design change real time, just in front of the designer sometimes, and really get the reason real time and provide new version in very few seconds. New Omni field we will see uh, later on, so very important common that has been redefined. Quick access to analysis tool, so quick access to what we use the, the most of the time. So we based the engineering of this software on the 8020 rules, which means that we have provided uh, what uh, ISM user use 80% of the time, really quick shortcut uh, accessibility. Just to recap, so thanks to the 3D experience platform on the left, we have the ability to uh, guarantee the digital continuum, so the collaboration, the streamlined workflow, and with the ISIN uh, design experience, which is an app of the 3D experience app, uh, platform, we are now able to have the right tool for the right job, very specific. Let's see uh, another demonstration right now. So here is a new leg electric aircraft called the EVTOL. And we can see by starting by the product dashboard where we can store the major information we want to share with the project team. We are able to access by clicking on the compass directly to the ICM Design Experience app. You can see that the user interface has been totally redesigned, taking on consideration, as I said, the most used command. We have the new VNAV, new VPalette, the mouse menu, we have quick access to analysis. And now we can start by importing sketches, the cloud of point, scale the sketching and position it. All those data brings uh, inside the 3D experience platform. And once we have imported all the data, we are able to organize those data thanks to the new organize uh, manager, which is a new user interface to organize that. As I said before, by just loading uh, the, the data from mechanical engineer, we are able to taking consideration technical constraints since the beginning of design. Predefined display shader has been improved because the, 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 the visualization is now part of the, the modeling experience, of course, and also get you better perception of the shapes. And now we can start by, you know, the tra traditional control point uh, sculpting. You can see here we create a curve by two points and with new modifiers that we have bring, like the global modeling, we are able to move very quickly order four, order five, order six uh, basic curve with, by moving one single uh, button. So really approaching this section very quickly. Having access to analysis, uh, shortcut to scale analysis, 
shortcut to stretch view in order to get more precise and more closer to the scan. So all the tools you have in a traditional explicit modeler software, you can retrieve it in this new application. We have introduced the variant storage inside each panel. So you're able to storage, just to store your option and retrieve them with one single click. So you have no more to click on each option. You just click on the variant storage and you get your precise option. The new fictive edge common, which enables the user to retrieve a theoretical line out of a scan in a very few clicks. Now we are able to explore other modifier like curve modifier box in order to generate a derivative curve and keeping the same weight, the same design intention. You can see here very quickly, we are able to manage and move with all those modifiers. Of course, user interface is completely customizable. You can see here, we can put the any kind of command and shortcut on the crown menu and get access very easily under the mouse saving a lot of mouse miles. I talk about new technology like the OmniSurf technology that actually brings, um, you know, with one single common, we are able to create any kind of surfaces based on the user selection. So interpreting the user selection, we are able to create all kinds of surfaces. And now we can start by putting section on top of the scan, start the traditional uh, CAS and Class A approach. You can see here, of course, we have dynamic measurement with the maximum value in order to, of course, help the user and assist the user uh, trying to fit the, the, the right tolerance. Better than this, we also have real-time deviation mapping, which actually measure the deviation from the scan and provide to the user feedback with color, like color mapping. Green is under the tolerance, Yellow is in between and red, of course, is out of the tolerance. Transition surface. So um, we also have, I would say, improved accessibility of all the modifiers like rotation, transformation. Very important aspect. We have now persistent matching thanks to the soft parametric. So avoiding tons of unuseful operation. Uh, basically, the, the ICM serve user used to work in explicit modeling. Now with the solver, with the soft parametric, you have only to match one single time and the solver keep guaranteed those connections anytime. So you don't have to rematch, saving a lot of unuseful operation in your daily work. Multi-view picture in picture uh, is a new technology as well that enable you to set up any kind of multi-view, position them. And uh, yes, you know, you can keep going and sculpting and switch from a view to another one, reaching the right quality. All this combined provides to the user new workflow, what I call the curve-based surface sculpting with software metric full associative. What does it mean? It means that we can, in this case, start by creating curves, then uh, create surfaces out of those curves, and at the end, really go and directly sculpting on top of the surfaces while keeping any time the connection with the input curves. This is a really unique workflow in the market, and this is thanks to the soft parametric and reshape. We'll talk later on. Snapping capability, of course, has been improved. Universal law that enables users to modify and manage the diffusion of a control point movement but with sliders. All this combined, of course, enables the user to have assembly context, uh, very complex and very nice performances thanks to the smart update. So you are now able to modify multiple surface by just clicking on the control point and modifying control point. And the soft parameter will guarantee all the transition, uh, all the highlight up to G3. And this, of course, provides you efficiency in design changes. Last but not least, we also have improved field capability. Field is very important common with this new, I would say, uh, low management of the coordinate. And as we are embedded in the ICM design experience, we can really have an integrated workflow. So by just clicking on the button, we are able to start a VR session and keep going with the modeling. So without any data import and export. So perceive real time and this VR uh, session and start and keep going with the modeling with, from the outside of the cabin, but also from the inside. 
you can see here. Very, very useful in during design phases. Design and simulation are more than ever connected topic. And as you can see here, the 3D experience platform also help the user and the designer to have simulation integrated uh, functionality inside the, the platform. You can see here we are during a review context to the thanks to the product perception experience that enables to create slide and create setup of review session. And you see that the back of the, of the uh, aircraft has actually some trouble and the shapes need to be optimized. You've seen without any data import or export, you can get back to ICM design experience, modify the shape, insert the shape inside the simulation and replay the simulation real time. And also compare side by side during design review, you can see here. You can see how we fix very quickly the problem and now the flow is optimized. You can also replay the simulation uh, within VR session, of course. Last but not least, uh, visualization, as I said, is more than ever part of the design experience. And thanks to integration of live rendering, we are able to produce photorealistic rendering by just adding materials, background, HDMI, uh, HDMI and, uh, and, you know, by just clicking on a button, we are able to calculate such a kind of realistic uh, photo. And of course, again, the integration of human design uh, enables you to have such a kind of ergonomic study in VR and uh, very uh, experience uh, the product before manufacturing. So we have seen that thanks to the 3D experience platform, we are able to start from the sketch up to the product experience without changing any software. So the, the workflow is really streamlined from A to Z. Okay, just to, to, to recap a little bit. For since the beginning of the project, again, we, we wanted to address several kinds of community. You can see here we have three kinds of community. The first one, of course, is the Katia community, which is actually our past. Then we have ice and surf community that we have to take care of, and other kind of community that we have called morphing community. Let's see in detail. Of course, Katia, there are people used to Bézier and nurse mathematics, mostly feature-based geometry and solver, so associativity. And of course, direct parametric modeling and templates in order to improve the efficiency. We wanted, all, we wanted also to bring to this uh, new application, of course, ISEMSURF users uh, that are more used to Bézier mathematics, more used to explicit geometry, and of course, dark modeling. And last, also the morphing, so the people that are used to deform, globally deform geometry, and uh, of course, nerds also culture. Now I give the end to, to Bill to show you more, I would say, advanced and detailed demonstration. Thanks, Fabio. That was real exciting stuff. So folks, this is just a short demo highlighting some of the new UI innovations delivered in this surface creation and modifi uh, modification tool IDX. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and sp uh, play this. Uh, so here we have a simple patch being modified using a universal law tool. You'll see this patch being bent in a second through control points. Great. So next we're gonna go ahead and use this universal law and we're gonna go ahead and break it and use these independently now this gives us some individual options to explore for more shapes. We're not touching any control points here. We're just changing the shape using the universal law. Let's go ahead and add a second uh, surface. We're gonna use a hotkey accelerator to do this. We'll also use hotkeys to add control rows and also to trace uh, in order to use a associative match between the two surface. Next, we'll demonstrate several new geometry manipulating options in IDX. First, the global and gravel point manipulator option. This lets users modify surfaces directly using several main points across the geometry to control the whole entire move. Notice how IDX handles control point diffusion between the sur uh, surfaces, and soft parametrics are also preserving perfect continuity between the patches using uh, a direct modification. 
We're gonna use the Torque Handle tool next. This tool gives users several new innovative ways to globally twist, slide, and deform geometry. And last, trace cross patch selection. This provides a faster way to select elements and sub-elements while working on geometry. So these are just a few of the UI innovations delivered for IDX. And this is all in order to provide a highly productive workflow for modelers. Here's a few things to remember about this application. First, it's really flexible. As demonstrated, you now have a very flexible tool that controls all transformation of geometry in a whole variety of different ways. So second, modelers can create using any approach, surface base, curve base, or hybrid. Modelers can also choose between Bezier or NURBS for geometry creation. These are both supported in IDX. So my suggestion for this application would be to mix and match uh, the best practices of all these approaches. And this is in order to provide the most control of your model during modifications while still achieving the best surface quality. So thanks to IDX's soft parametric capabilities, we can now keep a very robust associativity while directly sculpting objects freely. And that's something that Fabio just mentioned a moment ago. So, this is the next walk right here, and this is for the CAS people. These are just the innovative CAS and Class A technology so, uh, here. So here we've uh, imported an inner door panel image for reference using IDX. Uh, next, we create some curves. Again, we can do this in several ways, as mentioned, using Bezier or NURB curves. Uh, easy access modification tools, as you see here, provide a very productive ideation experience for modelers. Now we'll add a human. As a reference, we offer this simple solution in order to consider the end user in all designs. And again, we'll use some quick access modification tools for fast adjustments. Uh, this is our new OmniSurf technology with soft parametrics that Fabio was talking about. This technology allows users the ability to create associative shapes with highly explicit type capabilities. So here you can see how quickly you can add control rows and organically modify forms using our law option that we've been discussing. Really interesting. And last, uh, designers can combine geometry created in our other solutions to increase design opportunities. As demonstrated here, we're linking sub-D objects to a Bezier curve for quick proportional transformation opportunities for multiple elements. Really, really great stuff. Again, we're linking this to the curve. We're gonna move this in a Y and watch this proportional move. You'll notice the hand of the human moves also because it's connected basically to the IMA, uh, IMA sub-D surface. Really, really interesting technology. Yeah, let's take a closer look at that. Um, so basically, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a, a, a more in-depth look at what these different mathematics work to, together look like. So as mentioned, we used a door handle created with an IMA sub-D surface. Next, we linked this sub-D handle to the IDX Bezier curve, as you can see being done right here. So this is gonna allow us to adjust these linked options, uh, our objects that is proportionally all in one move, like I explained. So folks, let's not forget also, because you're in Katia, you can mix and match geometry created in our other applications, like in this example, using an IMA sub D door handle with an associative IDX feature. So just remember, you have one single software for all sub D, CAS, class A, visualization, VR, reverse engineering, generative de uh, design, uh, no need to change uh, softwares. And most importantly, you can do all this stuff without importing and exporting, real important. Uh, so I'm gonna sidebar just for a moment, folks. This is a real important topic uh, since we all work inside of the studios. This is uh, the clay to virtual reconstruction role. Uh, and what this is on the platform is this is a process that would expedite the studio's ability to generate quick class B and C feasibility data. And this is for the people like studio engineers that need information really quick when a scan data is de uh, developed. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this process and explain this to you. Uh, so again, this process creates um, uh, semi and automatic surfaces using a curved surface and uh, curved network. Uh, and these are built uh, right off the mesh. You go ahead and do these manually. And in this particular case, uh, we were just connecting all these curves together. And uh, that's the curved network portion, portion of this. Uh, this next tool that creates the automatic surface uses that curved network you created along with the mesh is the base. And I'm gonna do these in sharp edges because that's how we partition the surfaces. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put a tolerance in here and I'm gonna use the curve network, the mesh, to let the system drive and solve an automatic surface, as you can see being done here. 
using just those two entities. Again, that was built at one millimeter. That was the tolerance I baked in and I let the system solve. Let's go ahead and use a deviation analysis really quick, just to see how far we deviated from the one mil tolerance that we baked in. I'm grabbing the mesh and also the surface that was created. You can see the red and yellow areas. Uh, this is pretty much where it deviated from the mil, uh, one mil tolerance that we had baked in. Uh, you could fix this too if you wanted to. You could adjust some of those curved networks and rerun the uh, the solver again, uh, and even get closer to the uh, the scan data if you if you wanted to. But again, this is a real real fast. Uh, um, tool that does this really quickly for feasibility models. Again, something like this might have taken three, four, five days previously. I'd say five days uh, would be a good number. Uh, we got it down to six hours now on a project like this. If you want to know more about these KPIs too, please get a hold of me and we'll talk more about this, my domain also. So, Next, uh, let's continue that whole re uh, reverse engineering conversation with uh, the embedded RE tools in IDX. So again, folks, we're back into IDX now. I'll let this model play out. And this is per, for mostly uh, Class A modelers or people that are working with scan data. So I'll let this work. Uh, to deliver character lines, and character lines would be the first thing that I'd want to generate from this object, we're going to go ahead and use the embedded RE Fictive Edge tool that uh, Fabio described earlier. And we're going to use this in parallel with the contrast mapping tool. And this is a tool that uses a visual aid in order to place points on top of the surface that would represent the character line. Next, we're gonna create some curves too off these fictitious uh, curves that we created. And these are gonna be the curves that we're gonna to use to generate our main slab surfaces. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make a display list out of these, really quickly move these with our quick modification tools that have analysis tools built right directly into them. I'm gonna do this to each of these fictitious curves in order, like I said, to drive the edges of my main slab surfaces. Okay, so, we're going to go ahead and uh, build these single uh, surface blends off uh, uh, using our OmniSurf tool off our hot uh, commands that we had just shown on the crown menu. Again, I'm going to go ahead and move this surface around and open up some uh, analysis tools inside the IDX with our hotkeys. I'm just driving these surfaces now with these main five curves. I'm going to move these in X, uh, or that is in Z and Y really quick to get close. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my hotkey modification tools, real quick access. Now I'm going to go ahead and lift this in a normal. I'm pulling the surface up and I'm gonna use the universal law command here just to lay it directly down on top of my surface. Really, really nice workflow. We'll see this again in the side surface. I'm gonna go ahead and add a row here, pull it in the Y in a normal, and I'm gonna use the law command again just to lay it directly on the scan. We're gonna go ahead and add a few more rows in here just to get a little closer to the surface. Look how close we can get to the scan. Now I'm gonna grab one of those main edge curves that I created originally here and move this in Y just to lay it directly down on top. This is a very playful, explicit, and associative way to work. Really, really free form and associative at the same time. Really great way to work. Again, we're laying this in here. This is that new high-end uh, uh, variable fillet tool that Fabio was talking about. I went in here and baked two numbers in here uh, that I want to use to drive the fillet. And I'm going to use the graph now just to change it from the front to the back. I can adjust this and add points in the middle too, just to adjust maybe and create uh, maybe a little weirdness in the middle of the fillet if I wanted to catch a highlight. Now I projected these curves onto the surface to, to handle this blend area at the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this. This is all alive now. Uh, these are associative curves that I directly uh, projected onto the surface and I'm using it to uh, move my associative uh, blend there at the bottom. I went ahead and also created another fillet at the bottom uh, using our uh, variable fillet tool. And now I'm gonna make some adjustments on those curves that are driving the slab surfaces. Here we'll see some quick modifications. These are very big modifications. You see the fillets changing, the main slabs are changing, all my direct modeling adjusted with it proportionally. We'll do the blend, make some moves on this and you can see the blend update. Really wonderful way to work and really fast for changes. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this panel translucent just for a moment. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the images for the door panel. The reason I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna study the door opening here and I'm gonna drop some curves in a side view here to represent that door opening. I'm gonna go ahead and combine these. I'm gonna put some blends in there. I'm gonna trim them up and I'm gonna make one element out of this and I'm gonna drop it onto the door in a side view. I should say project. And I'm gonna use our associative gap command from ISD to automatically build a door opening here. <clears throat> this is something we can go ahead and celebrate with our designers. We can change that curve and change the door opening to go ahead and explore other things. Again, I wanted to check my sections to make sure I was directly on. And last, let's go ahead and use these display uh, options and materials that uh, IDX has directly on the contextual tab here you see in display. 
And I'm just going through them all. That's a dye neck color right here. We looked at an interior color. These are just some shiny silvers, some light chromes. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw the zebra on even here, just uh, off my hotkey, just so we can go ahead and celebrate the surface and the gap command and what, what it looks like. Really nice job, very fast. Just to give you a basic KPI, uh, I was just messing around with this and I wanted to kind of uh, work on that workflow. And it took me, maybe it seems long, maybe an hour to throw this whole thing together. But the thing was, is I could change it 30 more times in one hour, real impressive. Fabio, why don't you go ahead and take this slide for me? I gotta get a drink of water here for a second. Yes. So just to, to, to recap, with the ICM design experience, we really bring what we call the unifying model. What does it mean? It means that we have the, at the same time the flexibility and the freedom of creativity, which is very important. We bring to this application also the power of the associativity, which is native from Katia, so the out automation and also the parametric modeling. And of course, as I said, the associativity. And last but not least, the precision uh, of uh, the high quality surface standard that has been defined within ISMSERF. That's correct. Uh, Fabio, those are really, really great points. And I do want to elaborate on that too. Folks, it's not a race to see who can build a model the fastest the first time you build it. I only build a model once. The thing about IDX that I love the most, and even ISD for that, uh, for that reason, is the fact that I can change it 10 times, 15 times in an hour after that. Uh, we only build a model once, but in every milestone, I'll see teams changing models up to 30 times in one milestone. So again, that's where the, the big savings are using this tool, it's incredible. Uh, the reason we even have the ability to do that is because of this powerful tool that we talk about, uh, soft parametrics. And uh, Fabio, if you don't mind, I'm gonna go ahead and take this slide. I'd like to talk about yeah. this for a second. This is really dear to my heart. Um, and also a lot of other users, this is a, a, something that really uh, puzzles a lot of people. So we're gonna talk a little more in depth about this. So here's a really in-depth explanation about this soft parametric tool that we're raving about here. So with IDX, you know you have a choice. We keep talking about this, explicit or associative, but it's not like uh, maybe V5 KT or even uh, ISD the way we used to use it where we had either dead or alive. Uh, in this example, uh, for example, if you wanted to be uh, uh, working in a datum, we have that option still available. So this will serve the folks out there like the traditional ISIM workers, the people that want to use maybe a surface-based approach that want to work in datum, perfectly acceptable. Uh, it's, it, we, we do this in this tool all day long, it's there. We also have a mode called inactive. Uh, so if you don't want something to be fully parametric, then try inactive. Inactive mode is uh, the same workflow as datum, except now you have a feature with memory. So uh, for instance, you can work in a datum workflow, uh, but if you move something and something's attached to it, you want it to be active, you can go ahead and force that. We have the alert mode. The alert mode, uh, if you change a feature, for instance, uh, that affects another feature, uh, it won't up update the other feature, it'll just tell you. So basically, if I have a flange built off a surface and I change that main parent feature, it's, it's gonna alert me and say, hey, you have another entity built from this. Do you wanna update this or not? It just gives you that opportunity, okay? So these are the three soft parametric modes that can never be modified using CATIA tools, or CATIA update tools, I should say. So if your geometry um, is in any of these three modes, remember folks, uh, updating will not affect these elements. Now for the modes that can be updated, uh, adaptive mode. This is the mode that allows you to modify and tune shapes. So all the shapes connected to this shape being modified will also move in a free and creative way. Really, really interesting. Uh, we have the rebuild mode. Uh, this will let you sculpt a uh, shape, for instance, uh, but when you have a large update uh, that takes place, the geometry will, will basically reset. This is like the traditional CATIA associativity that we're used to right now. We have the reshape mode, uh, is when you build a feature, uh, like a blend, for instance, a blend surface uh, created by two curves, uh, but they still have the option to be manipulated. Uh, for instance, the internal control points of the blend can be accelerated uh, without affecting the continuity that uh, created the uh, blend originally. So basically, if you have two surfaces that create a 90, you have a curve projected on each of those and you create a blend in the middle, you have the opportunity to go in there, move the control points in any way you want to accelerate it, like I'd mentioned, but it doesn't affect the continuity that you had originally created to build the shape. Uh, the last one right here, that was a mouthful, I'm sorry folks, uh, revert. Revert is if you are not satisfied with all the sculpting and everything you did, that's the bailout button. You hit revert and it takes you right back to where you started. 
Yes, yeah, actually my two favorite is the adaptive and uh, of course the reshape. For instance, when I create fillet, yeah. uh, every class I use, I used to touch the fillet uh, in order to provide uh, the right position of every single point. And uh, with uh, reshape, we are really able to capt this design intent. So this manual into in intention inside mm -hmm. the feature. That's, that's very powerful, actually. It is. It really is. Yeah, if you don't mind, I will. I'm going to recap it. But with that point that you were making, uh, just so you folks can really understand uh, what we're trying to explain. Uh, in that door uh, presentation that I showed you, there was five main curves driving all the slab surfaces, the main globals. Here's the impressive part about that. The only associative aspect I had in there was the original surface being built. I built it to those edges, so those, those four curves can control the whole entire surface. Everything else in the middle is more or less explicit type modeling. So if you're afraid of associativity, that was the only thing that was associative. Everything else was freeform. So uh, I do want to recap a little bit. Uh, this is a summary slide here, just to go over the benefits that uh, Fabio and myself had discussed. So folks remember, ISM Design Experience or IDX is a dedicated user experience for doing surface modeling. This is for both types of surface modelers, CAS, all the way up to class A production style surfacing. So don't forget about that, folks. Uh, we created the solution to bring the industry new tools, more far powerful tools. Uh, these are ones that allow users to choose the way they work, uh, if it be uh, based on their needs and their deliverables. So again, you choose the way you work. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's explicit, uh, if it's associative, and or if it's a little combination of both. Uh, you also benefit from being uh, able to choose several surfacing paths and methodologies for construction in your models, as we have explained before. And uh, please don't forget, you still benefit from all the unified modeling technologies embedded in our other CATIA solutions. This includes reverse engineering and all the other CATIA surfacing tools. Uh, and last, and this is very incredibly important for everybody to understand, last uh, is the formal and non-formal reviews. Uh, please don't forget about these. We deliver a native high-end visualization tool. So now, with the 3D Experience platform, you have realistic high-end rendering and VR capabilities without this is the most important part, without importing or exporting any data anymore. Yeah, multi-view VR collaboration is really an important topic, especially we are working with far distance and uh, it's better to have those such kind of tool to, to share. That's correct, Fabio, for sure. So, uh, yeah, just a short to, to inform you uh, that we have a dedicated community for Katia Crafty Design and Styling. Um, I really invite you to join this community if you want to know more about our product, our an exchange on top of methodology, get, um, I would say, best practices and so on. So in order to do that, you just have to Google it. And you, you retrieve yeah, the first result. And don't forget to create a 3D uh, passport, which is free actually. And once you have your own passport, uh, you can get in and start comment, share with other uh, user like you. Uh, this is really the space to exchange uh, with professional, but as well with uh, Dassault system experts. So if you have questions, if you have a, you know, additional remark, or simply if you want to share your way to work, this is a place uh, where I strongly invite you to join. And I think, Bill, yeah, we just uh, arrived at the end of this webinar. Thank you for all your demonstration, and thanks for all the people who attended this webinar to stay with us until the end. So maybe now it's time to raise questions. Abel, have you got some interesting question? Yeah, I thought that was uh, really fascinating. I think one of the things I thought was um, fascinating is that once you're in, you don't have to import and export. And more importantly, that VR headset element where you could bring in different levels of designers, I guess. And you mentioned this remote um, access. I know from experience, some of the design directors now who are in different design centers of the world are traveling around with their own boxes full of VR headsets and the right right software are you finding that the level of people who are accessing this sort of um, 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 applications are a wider group of designers than traditionally you've had before because of covid because of the restrictions 
Yeah, actually, yeah. But even before uh, the car OEM, where we were working on multiple geos, so those tools really brings a next level of understanding uh, because you are, the interaction you have during those reviews is deeper compared to have just a screen, screen share. And also, the, as we are doing shape, so the perception of uh, of the final product is is improved because, of course. We, we have this uh, augmented, uh, I would say, perception with, with the HDMI. So, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's, it's very important, such a kind of aspect. Okay. In between my um, really interesting questions, I've got some technical questions, which uh, I'm definitely going to get wrong, but I'm going to try to, to ask the questions from the audience. So I've got one from the audience. What should I expect to see G1 or values as while I'm using connect checker features. So I was reading this question. It was not clear to me as well, uh, but I just wanted <laughs> Good, to it's come. Just, it's not just me, okay. Good. I, I hope I'm gonna be able to answer correctly, but I just wanted to comment the fact that uh, in ICM design experience, uh, actually we go G1, G2, and up to G3, which is the next level. So which, which is the, the class A standard actually. So this is the first comment I have out of this question, but probably the question was, um, or the answer could be, yes, we once we have connected all those uh, surfaces together, of course we have measurements. So the connect checker is an analysis tool to check that if we are still in tolerance or not. So we can retrieve a G1, G2, or G3 inside a little tolerance. So of course, we have all, all those tools to check the quality of the surfaces once we have created. Okay, uh, Bill, there's a question for you. I don't know if you could see it in the questions or if you want me to read it out. Please. I miss theoretical in, in, inter, intersection, intersects. They add a discipline, repeatability and predictability into CAS process for the surfacing team. It looks like they are making a comeback. Would you agree oh, yeah. with that? Most definitely. And I believe the, the question was based uh, on the fictive edge tool is what they were talking about. Uh, is that kind of what you were talking about, finding that character uh, line of the fictive edge? I, well, I'm, I, that's right. I, I assume I'm assuming so. I'm assuming that's so. what it is. It's, it's, yeah. an, it's, it's such an important feature, and I didn't even realize how much uh, how important it was because you're not throwing horseshoes up in the air anymore. I used to kind of predict that character line before. So I'd go in there and draw 3D, 3D curves where I felt they were in the uh, in the fiti uh, fictitious area where that fictive edge curve was, and then I would kind of lay my surface down. But like I said, it was a guessing game. Right now, this the predictability of that fictive edge tool is incredible. Uh, there are some things that we didn't uh, explain about it too. Uh, the real estate that that actually spans between the theoretical, uh, you have a radius area and you usually have two surfaces. You have the ability to actually increase that radius uh, area that it's picking up, so the real estate that it's picking up on the other side. So it's almost like taking a straight edge on both surfaces and picking that exact theoretical. It's an amazing tool that works really fast. We even have a faster tool on top of this one, I just didn't show it today, that does the same thing. It's really important, especially for a curve-based modeler. Uh, really incredible way to work. Uh, no guessing games anymore. You're, you're creating the curves, and the curves that you create are usually for, uh, first time right. Okay. Thanks for that, Bill. Um, I'm going to ask a question uh, directly to you guys. Uh, what do you personally like about the new application? Um, while I've done that, guys, I'm going to put in the chat that only we can see, Bill, some questions as well. So my question to you again is, what do you personally like about the new application? You're asking me first, or Fabio? Uh, uh, <laughs> Fabio, take it away. Go on, Fabio. No, no, go on, Bill. It, okay, I'll start, it, it's off. I'll start off. This is the thing that I love about it the most. Uh, I teach a lot, so I've been consulting. Just in the last five years, I've worked at Dassault. This is no joke. I've I've consulted probably over 350 people. That's that's I've either taught ISD or Class A surfacing or, or the whole workflow in, 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 in together. And these are 40-hour classes. When I go to other tools and other people's workbenches, it's very difficult for me to find their tools and find everything. Uh, the way they set up the tool and the system, even the main bars, it's easy for me to walk up to someone else's tube or their computer, that is, and their software and, and start working on their on their system. Uh, that is great. So basically, it's this monochromatic, very simple, clean, streamlined UI 
that makes it very pleasing for me. It's a very simple thing to, to work with and uh, that and it's also created for both CAS and Class A people. Uh, what that means to me is I, my tool doesn't look too mechanical anymore. Uh, I was a heavy ISD user, great tool, incredible, uh, but the users, including myself, as I started realizing it, I wanted that kind of creative feel. And this tool provided that for me. Uh, the last thing I'll add, and I'll let Fabio take the rest, is all the accelerators. Uh, the accelerators and the customization of the accelerators. Even though that everything's laid out, so a person like me can walk up to anybody's computer and start working on it and, and showing them what I'm trying to achieve, the fact that I can customize everything to my uh, specifications, I can put up to, geez, I think it's uh, 40 some uh, functions just at my hotkeys. So I never have to leave the middle of my screen while I'm working. Uh, Fabio, I'll, I'll let you carry on, I'm sorry. You, you can continue well, on the I rest with it. <laughs> yeah, the question is um, in regards, what do you personally like about the application? Well, actually what I like is that I can, get the the right um, tool at the right moment without searching too much which means that i can turn it off section turn it off a uh, control point like this while previously the user interface was not optimized for such a workflow so this bring really efficiency which is i like the most the second which is a very important value, and we don't have to underestimate this, this value, is that the fact that we are integrated really saves globally huge amount of time on the full process, okay? So the streamlined workflow through the department on the car OEM, or as, as well, even small agency, the, the time you save, not only on the daily work for a surface modeler, but to the full process is huge. So this is an incredible value for, uh, for you know, for the whole process. Actually, it's not just matter. Uh, this analysis is better than uh, than this software, etc. Or this, uh, it's, it's really a, 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 a long story. I mean, yeah, um, I guess. So, yeah, continue, please, Fabio. No, uh, I think that those are the two: efficiency and the, and the streamlined workflow are, for me, no, you know. The best value I love from this application. Yeah, and I think Bill really touched on it. I mean, if you can kind of tailor it to what you want, I think you, Fabio, you're alluding to that as well. You feel more comfortable with it, I guess. It's something you're familiar with. Um, and then I guess if you're saving time across the board, then you've got more time to do more iterations. Uh, exactly. You know, yeah. you buy time to do more. Really, you don't. I think in the day, in the world we live in today, you don't buy time and you go and have a cup of coffee. You buy time to do more, which in theory, all that creativity and all that work will come yeah. of use at some point, whether it is the, 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 the remodeling of the next version of the, the next iteration of the vehicle. So I guess um, time, I think you hit it nail on the head. I think that's really, I put a load of questions in the chat because I didn't want to get them wrong. Oh, Can no, you see them, Bill? Comment, sorry, Abel. And also you save the frustration to lose data when you do export and export. So yeah. actually every time you do an export and export, at any time you lose a part, a piece of information and you have to recreate. And this is very frustrating also. Has Go there ahead. been a complaint? Is that a complaint, Fabio, that you've been receiving is why you've made this change or is it something that you've noticed uh, come, come again any complaint what do you mean about it, 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 to get to this point well, i didn't realize that when you exported it you lost some potential because, you know, when, you start, you've been noticing? when you start to manage data at five base you often uh very often happen that you you don't have the right data you have not the most updated data so you just bring the import to another software, the data which actually is not the latest one. So you start working on something which is whole. We keep going with the working, and then at the end of the day, you discover that you have too much with what happened to our your colleagues, and and this is yeah, pretty much frustrating. Then you have to mix. It's very manual, you know. Sometimes could be a very manual workflow, which is uh, actually very frustrating. You know, it's always painful to redo and redo the same things so as far as we are able to avoid listen like uh, the matching the persistence of matching ISM surf user and all the explicit modeler has to rematch every time has to destroy uh, uncut and recut again 
Look at the work from Bill. I, I, I totally, I totally understand because I've experienced that through all packages. We've got so many questions, guys. We've got to try to get through these. Can you see them in the chat, or, or do you uh, want me to read them? Expand the window. Hold on, and uh, yeah, oh, I have the window. Okay, in the curve, creation model off the scan. What the Bezier surface or the surface? So actually, the scan was a scan out of uh, you know we we got three D printed and a scan. But what we have seen here uh, was ba both Bezier mathematics, Norv's mathematics, and also Subdiv all combined in the same uh, demonstration, in order to really have a multiple mathematics approach. So CAS modeler sometimes used to work with NERVs and Subdiv. Class A modeler, of course, they, they really potentially prefer 90% of the time Bezier because it's the, the really a good way to be most precise. So, so you have seen all those mathematics combined uh, in one single uh, app. There okay, was I've got a very basic I, I, question. I just want to read out the question because you didn't read it out. So it's important that the guys hear it. Um, yep. I've got here, do I need Katia installation to run IDX? Or is it standalone? Okay. Um, well, actually, Icing Design Experience is an app which is embedded in a, a 3D experience platform. This is where you got all those value. And, uh, you know, you can have a standalone sandbox for the design studio. This is what I, I call. So you can have your own little environment for design studio. And also you can have the streamline big environment for, for the full company, I would say studio, I mean design center. And of course, you can separate uh, databases uh, in terms of in order to, you know, keep the confidentiality, especially for, for design, which is a very strategic uh, team sometimes. So they have to keep confidentiality not share with everyone so you can work kind of a light little team standalone in 3d experience you know you are having your own uh, cloud or, or on premise space yeah that's that's the way i see uh the answer to this question actually Abel, it's not a, it's not a it's not a standalone in other words it's not a point solution you can buy by itself if that's what the uh, person was asking just in that's, case i think that's the question yeah okay yeah. that's yeah so it's actually it, it's in katia basically you can access it's, it. it's with the platform is what it, it is the training experience plan. of yes. course anytime you can export file base okay. if it was the question so you can store your file 3d xml on top of your desktop if you want to do this or send to a third supplier uh but yes this is this okay. is the way we see uh, how to work. Okay, so you may have answered it in the last one, but it says, "Do I need um, uh, when the trial when the trial license will be available?" So when will the trial license be available to the user community? The trial, trial, license, trial, license. trial license. Did you mention that? I don't think you mentioned a trial license. No. No, uh, we, okay. we don't have trial lens, uh, um, licenses. Actually, we we are running an advisor program, but it's very limited on invitation only. With our, I would say, major customer from the past, and our key user, so we are running this program, of course, to to measure what we have done, to to let them test, get some feedback, and improve the the, the software. Of course, those software are always improving. So, but we don't have a trial uh, trial for for everybody it would probably okay. be advisable that your company actually got a hold of us and then we'd be able to do an evaluation with you we could talk more about that after though okay so what we'll do is we'll reach reach out to each of the questions and send them on to you and then you can communicate directly with them to follow that up bill and fabio okay is the software web based? just sorry Abel, just to conclude uh, for the people that would like to know more and keep in contact with us please uh, join the community I just shared before, and then we can start discuss. You know, uh, if there are people that are strong interest, we can discuss. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Uh, is the software web-based, uh, a local installed, or both? 
we have a cloud on-premise version. It's available okay. on the cloud platform and uh, on-premise. Okay. Um, are there any courses available for IDX workflow? The best is to join the community. And also we are sharing, uh, I would say, demos and, uh, and also introduction uh, videos uh, with explanation, voiceover on YouTube, LinkedIn, uh, and of course, the most of the content will be shared in our internal community, the SWIM community I just mentioned before. So this is the real best place to, to share. So uh, the very easy is join the, the LinkedIn Katia, join the, the YouTube Katia, and you will find the link to drive to the internal community. Okay. There is a lot of training uh, information in there, like Fabio had mentioned, but yes, we will be offering training also too. Okay, excellent. And they can get that via the community. So we'd strongly advise you to join the community. Okay, watch back this webinar, which will be available on Car Design News, but go to the community and they'll, I guess that's when you'll be dropping things in. Um, uh, I got a question again, and I want to ask about internal error. While we were creating a complex multiple surface, etc., we can see internal error usually in Katia. What can you say about it? Is that is that a bit of a negative question? I guess we you can ignore that one if you like, or could you answer that? What is the that? I, I, of, I'm not. It'd be kind of vague, really. I mean, internal it's too vague. Error, I, mean, I think. Yeah, yeah, we'd have to find out what error he's talking about or she's talking about, and yeah, I mean, uh, I I couldn't even answer that. What error? Yeah. Exactly. What I'd suggest that person does is go onto the community, forward the error, and forward the image, and these guys will better help you because that seems like sure. the best solution. Um, right. So I'm going to ask. We're coming to the end, but I've got some really, really difficult questions which I would want to ask just because I'm interested. Um, I do love the idea of joining the community and getting some tasters um, sessions. So please, everyone, join the community. Um, uh, why do you think the app is better than the existing solutions? So I'm talking about the bigger market here. So why do you think it's better? I'd like to answer that from a modeler standpoint really quickly. Um, being a, a professional in this industry for quite a few years, the thing that I find really unique about it is there's actually a lot of bat baton handing uh, off, as I'd like to call it. Uh, we do a lot more at the reverse engineering side at the beginning. So it's a, first of all, it's a, it's a start to end solution, which I really, really enjoy. A lot of people are using other methods to create uh, early maturation models. Uh, and that's primarily because surface modeling takes a little more time. So we tend to go to sub D or polyhedral modeling. Uh, this tool uh, is something that you can bypass some of that. Uh, it's not like avoiding polyhedral totally, uh, but you can start modeling your class A surfacing at a faster stage or earlier ideation stage. The benefit that to that is, is uh, everybody has to be honest with themselves. A at this point, uh, surface is the deliverable. Uh, we always deliver surface right now for manufacturing, and uh, it kind of seems like we are going around in a circle. We're developing something just to throw it away or use as a reference to go ahead and develop what we had to at the beginning. Uh, so we start right away at, at surfacing, and that can be taken from conceptual right to the end in, in the deliverable stage. Uh, so even at the early ideation stage, you can add a lot of associativity, uh, more segmented associativity just to capture the shapes and the proportions, and then start narrowing it down to component, like in, internal panels within the uh, interior or exterior panels. And, and again, you can follow the associativity right from there. So again, you don't have to start in other softwares or different tools. Uh, everything from visualization to the beginning from reverse engineering uh, is all captured in one tool. Yes, it's not a point solution, it's a complete workflow that is correct. Is it's a process, it's you're not just delivering surface. And, and to go on to, do, uh, to that too, what other uh, is real important about that, what makes it different is that the one thing that we keep hammering on is the collaboration with the other teams. A surface is not the end of, of, of it all, that's just the beginning. And to be able to collaborate with the teams that are providing feasibility for us to actually uh, interact with, uh, with our studio, uh, to be able to interact so quickly and seamlessly, really fast with one truth, one file that everybody receives that has access to it in the studio is where you're gonna save. And not to mention, it's gonna provide you with what you're looking for, more, more, more opportunities. Yeah. Yes, also I the communication that... with downstream process could be, yeah. Yeah, thank you. I think um, you really nailed that point. I'm going to ask, we're just running out, out of time, we'll come up to time, but I just wanted to ask a question, and it's really talking about the future. 
So we're at the point of IDX being showcased by you guys today, which is fabulous. Um, but I want to add in the next five years, I mean, um, I know it's difficult to predict the future, um, but, you know, is there anything that you can see happening in this space or you would like to see in this space in the next five years? Where could it go? How far could we take this? Um, get your crystal balls ball out, guys, and really work. This is really picking your brains here. Where, where, where do you think this could go? And, you know, we're living in a world where, where anything is possible, and you guys live in that environment, um, and time is an important thing. So have you got any um, um, uh, future, future direction do you think it could go in? I just... I do want to add one really quick. Yeah, we, <laughs> we both want to jump on that one here. It's just, it's this, it's this easy. We did predict the future. They did it years ago. Uh, the whole platform, the whole idea, this collaboration between everything, fast visualization tools without exporting and importing, materials that you can lay together and review immediately, teams that can speak back and forth with one truth file, and everybody working seamlessly, not I create my A surface, throw the baton to the next person. We all start at the same time and end at the same time. So it minimizes the uh, uh, design timeline and provides that extra time for opportunities. Please, Fabio, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> so yeah, Abel, we, we, we are not able to predict the future, but um, yeah, we, we are trying to, since, uh, since years, to anticipate what's going on in the next future. And what you see today in the market, if you have to look to the past, is that the, the actual uh, solution that I use from, from Studio are 20 years old which means that our technology that are pretty old and it's time now to to move forward and and uh, you know uh, embrace new i would say modern technology for for those people so i cannot predict the future but really i believe that the the learning we have from the past uh help us to define what uh, i hope will be the standard uh, over the next five years yeah Thank you so much, guys. I, I would just like to add to that, that this relationship between design, engineering, digital design, and even the design directors, you guys are bridging that. And I, and I do love that comment, uh, Fabio, that 20 years, we're still, we need to move forward quickly. And IDX is an example on how this can work seamlessly. I think having more time will create better design because you'll have more time to work on it and to do more iterations and changes and developments. So I'm I'm super excited on how this will be embraced. I appreciate you guys creating this community where you can get everyone involved. Um, and I guess that helps you guys to, to, to develop and evolve as a company because the end users are the guys who are going to give you the feedback. Um, and um, I'm probably not the right person to get onto this executive testing community these guys who, who get the, the front seat. But I think that's a great initiative as well. You've got people testing it and, and really pushing the boundaries of what you guys can do. So I just wanna say thank you guys for doing your presentation. Thank you for the audience for all your questions. If we haven't answered any of them, we'll forward them to Bill and Fabio and the, the DASA team. Um, or right in the community. <laughs> yeah, and, and the community. I personally won't put it in the community because um, I'm probably the wrong person, but we'll allow you guys to to really answer it and to give the, the, the appropriate answers to these guys. Again, this will be available on Car Design News. Um, it will be in your your um, uh, emails that you'll receive. If you want to go to our website, it will be uploaded to the site um, and you can watch it there. And if you do want to reach out to Fabio and you don't want to go through the community, I will force you to do that. Um, uh, please reach co contact me directly at Car Design News and I'm more than happy to put you in contact with uh, Bill and Fabio, and I'm sure they'll be happy to talk to you guys. Thanks again, guys. Thanks from um, Michigan. Thanks from Paris. Um, I really enjoyed it's it. It was really insightful. Yeah, Carter Sign News, we're in, we're in London. So guys, we'll see, hope to see you all soon face to face. Um, Wonderful. Stay, stay safe, that. everyone, and we'll see you next on um, a CDN webinar. Thank you, Abel. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.